Well, this is a live feed on the Centers for Disease Control site. We see over 17 and a half million officially diagnosed cases. And we've got problems we're going to look at today, particularly in uh, Tennessee. We do see an increase in cases there, it's dark blue. Also California with problems in the hospital provision, at least in some parts of the state. And we see that the states with the greatest increase in the past seven days there, Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma, California. So we're going to look at that. And let's just before we leave this site, let's look at the trends. And we do see really an alarming spike in cases. Less cases reported there on the 19th, but... Uh, there's probably some artifact in that spike, but there's no getting away from the fact that the seven day rolling average is increasing in terms of cases in the States. And also, unfortunately, deaths are also going up really quite significantly now in the States. Welcome to this video, of course. Um, now let's just have a quick review of those figures there. Um, this is from the COVID Symptom Tracker, that, so that's the official site we've just been looking at, uh, CDC Trends. So I know that's the UK one there, that's from the last video. This is the US one here. Um, and this is the COVID Symptom Tracker project, which we're going to look at some data from now. So the official cases in 24 hours, the last 24 hours here are registered as 194,000 according to the COVID symptom tracker app. Now this is just quite an incredible, quite an incredible increase in numbers in the States. And um, I don't want to be alarmist about this, but the mutation that's arisen in the United Kingdom has probably spread to other areas already because it arose in the United Kingdom on the 20th of September. So it's had plenty of time. Let's hope it's not present in the United States, but we don't have data on that at the moment. But this is an alarming increase in cases. And as, as has been the case for the last few weeks now, it's going up 9 10% per week, unfortunately. Testing in the United States is still going up, remains good. And hospitalizations now, there's a total of 113,000. That is the total number of people hospitalized in the United States. Gone up a lot. Uh, this number in brackets here is the number of people in intensive care and this is the number of people who are ventilated uh, in intensive care at the moment. So hospitalizations up in the States, in some areas they're severely challenged as we'll see, in other areas not so bad, but uh, in most parts of the country they are increasing. Deaths over 300,000 according to this COVID symptom tracker app. Now, Christmas and New Year is going to be a problem. Now, we've already had, as we're going to see, increases as a result of um, Thanksgiving. There's definitely been increases as a result of Thanksgiving. A Thanksgiving surge, as of course we predicted weeks before the event, during the event, after the event, we're now seeing it. But now there's millions of people in the United States on the move for Christmas and New Year. Now, th th this is basically like a form of suicide. It just really is incredible. It beggars credulity that people are carrying on doing this. Um, now, it's estimated at the moment there's 84 million people on the move in the United States. This is, this is just uh, an incredible uh, amount of moving around given the situation we're in. So the Transport Security Agency in airports on Friday, they screened well over a million people. On Saturday, they screened well over a million people. So these are people mostly on domestic flights in the United States. Just a great increase in, in air travel there. And the spread here is absolutely guaranteed. This is spreading the virus around the country. There's no question about that. Now, flights are still arriving in the United States from the United Kingdom. Uh, I would prefer they are cancelled until we know more about this mutation that's arisen in the United Kingdom. But they're still arriving. For example, we believe there are six flights from the United Kingdom into New York today. 
not, not good. It means that this mutation will still carry on spreading, potentially, uh, into the Americas. Now, Dr. Burks, this surprised me. She apparently she's taken a trip with a family somewhere with three generations. Don't know if she's quite broken the rules, but doesn't seem to have been following the spirit of the rules. D disappointing. Um, we must have leaders that say, do as I do, not do as I say. Don't know the full details there. Might be misjudging Dr. Burks, but uh, certainly not good publicity. Now, on to better news. The Moderna National Institutes of Health vaccine Shipping started to 4,000 locations this week. Excellent news. People are being vaccinated on Monday today as we speak. This is transported at normal freezer temperatures, unlike the Pfizer one. Therefore, the logistics are much easier. This is really good news. But it's important to realise that while everyone who's vaccinated is going to... Well, not everyone, but the vaccine is going to be very protective from, for individuals. And we believe it's going to stop them getting severe disease. But it's not going to have a massive herd effect for some time. So we're talking February, March, April before this is going to affect herd immunity. So wonderful news for individuals. But it means all the preventive precautions we're taking now must, must be carried on for this winter. Absolutely must be. Now the vaccine is going to be rolled out in stages. 1A seems to be mostly medical workers. Uh, 1B, frontline workers, including grocery store workers, which is good to see, and the over 75s. And then the much larger uh, phase 1C, uh, 65 to 74 year olds. And that's also going to include um, people with comorbidities, 16 to 64 year old people with comorbidities. The vaccine at the moment is not being rolled out to children under the age of 16. We don't have the data on that yet. Those trials are ongoing at the moment, but it's not there yet. Uh, all essential workers, including food workers, retail workers, bank workers, basically all frontline workers are going to be vaccinated in this stage, this phase at 1C. And that is going to equal 180 million Americans are going to be vaccinated. It is going to take some time. It's going to be a combination of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine can vaccinate 180 million Americans. So remarkably good news. Now, moving on to Tennessee, as we talked about before, uh, leading number of cases per capita. Thanksgiving spike seems to be occurring as a result of the Thanksgiving mixing. Christmas could overcome the hospital system. We really cannot have the mixing in Christmas and New Year that we had at Thanksgiving. That double, triple whammy would just overwhelm hospital systems and people would die who otherwise would not have died. Tennessee Health Commissioner, uh, if we have another surge over Christmas, it will break our hospitals. Very simple statement. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has not ordered a statewide mask mandate. I mean, I've just got that from the popular press in the States. Can it be true? It is. He hasn't ordered a statewide mass mandate. This is just, you know, the nature of the emergency we are facing. Um, indoor gatherings limited to 10 people. Let me say that again. Indoor gatherings limited to 10 people. I mean, is that supposed to be a protect protective measure? I mean, this is just an indoor gathering of 10 people at the moment is utterly reckless behavior in my view it is just incredible what more let me show that picture there what more does it take to get this message through to some people uh, but he has implored people to keep holiday gatherings to their household which of course we would wholeheartedly uh, endorse um, so um, Tennessee community health measures could be better I'm sure most of the people in Tennessee are behaving very responsibly as individuals, but we really do need leadership to, to say, do as I do. And uh, th th then when we can see that leaders are leading by example, we're more likely to follow them. California, hospitals are reported as being overwhelmed in some areas. Quality of care seems to be reduced in some areas. 
non-optimal care has been reported for COVID and non-COVID patients alike. Because, of course, if we're full of COVID patients, it's harder to care for everyone else as well. Um, we've only got one healthcare facility. And if that's crammed full of COVID patients, then it makes it rather impossible to treat everyone else at the same time. Now, Los Angeles County seems to be particularly bad. So Los Angeles County uh, Medical Center Chief Medical Officer says we're getting crushed. There's no point sugarcoating this. So Los Angeles County does seem to be particularly badly affected. Unfortunately, there are no ICU beds apparently left there at the moment. Hospitalizations are up by 33%, I think in the past, I'm not quite sure how long that is in the past week or two, I believe. Um, this means we could be into a triage situation where we give the patients with the best chance of survival priority. Uh, of course, that means that patients with lower chances of priority don't get the treatment that we would uh, like to give them under normal circumstances. So there's no question, given this data from the states that we're seeing, we are in an emergency situation. And the idea that people are still flying around the country thereby spreading the virus more. I mean, what kind of numbers are we going to be seeing? You know, it's... Um, and and I, it's just so frustrating. I mean, I expressed my disappointment with my own countrymen in, in the last video, um, that people just are not obeying the spirit of these rules very often. Many are, the majority are, and it's the same in the States. The vast majority of people, of course, behaving very, very responsibly. But it doesn't take too many people to behave irresponsibly to carry on this pandemic. And a lot of people are going to get sick and die before the herd immunity from the vaccines kicks in. Now, just briefly, um, Australia. Um, Sydney, there's 83 cases so far from this cluster. New South Wales borders where Sydney is, is closed. It's spread to central Sydney, although it is being contained at the moment, we believe. And it looks like it all comes from two uh, overseas returnees. So Australians that have returned from overseas. And obviously, obviously, as was the case in Queensland, something has gone wrong with the quarantine arrangements. So that's where we are now. Um, as regards to this uh, mutation... I don't know of any evidence that it's in the uh, United States, but, but, it, but it could well be. But whether it is or not, we have to behave as though it is. And even though the virus is more transmissible with this new mutation, if we uh, follow all the regulations and are very cautious, we still won't give it the opportunity to spread. But it means we have to be even more meticulous with hands, face, space, ventilate because of the increased biological the increased biological transmissibility that this virus has. So um, what's going to happen in the States, because of the amount of people travelling around for Christmas, all these people on the move, all these people flying, it does mean there'll be a Christmas New Year surge, as we're seeing a Thanksgiving surge now. That means there'll be the number of cases will increase throughout January, probably throughout February, before the herd immunity effect of the vaccine starts kicking in later on, in perhaps April or May, um, then cases will start to go down. But of course, because cases are going to go up in January and February as a result of behaviour over Christmas and New Year, then that means uh, sick people are going to increase, pressure in the hospital system is going to increase, and inevitably there's going to be more deaths. And there can be so many people after Christmas and New Year get sick all at the same time that it might not be possible to treat them all as we would want to treat them. That is what could well happen in the United States. The thing is to make sure that the hospitals are never overwhelmed by preventing the transmission in communities. OK, um, that's all I want to say for that video. So um, thank you for watching as always.